Kill the Quick here with our next episode on Hero Forged Aegis Online. In this episode, we'll actually be covering the texture painting itself. We do have a little bit more setup to get onto, so let's get started right to it. We set up a material for our creature here. So let's do that. We're going to right click to select, go over here, click on New, and that's all you need. Don't need to change anything else down there. We're going to size this up a little bit so we have more room. And the bottom left corner over here, click on that menu and change it to a node editor. It's about in the middle right here. You can do the mouse wheel to zoom in on that. Click down on the middle mouse wheel to move around. And then shift a texture and image texture to make a new image texture node. Click on the color output and drag it to the color input. And now we need to have a texture set up. So go to the UV image editor at the upper left of the screen. It should be right this quadrant of the screen right here. And just click on new down here to make a new image. So Blender actually supports uh, mathematical operators in these little fields right here. So we can actually just put in a little asterisk and then four to multiply that number by four, which automatically gives us a 4K image. Let's do that to the other number right there to keep it square, because remember square images work, work best for computer graphics, that type of thing. And we're gonna give it a name. Let's call it the GNOLE image. And we'd also set a default color here if we want. That's good. So now it's pure black. Now at this node we made, we're going to click right here and that'll let us browse to the image we just made, null image, right there. Now we'll just kind of move these out of the way here. Open up everything because we've finished all the setup. Right click on our null and then down at the bottom here where it says object mode, we can click on texture paint mode. And now all the controls for this are the same as for moving the camera around. Middle mouse click to rotate, middle mouse wheel to zoom in and out and then hold shift and click on the middle mouse button to pan about. And that's it. Everything we've needed to get set up to be ready to texture paint is done. So now we can get started. All right, so let's get to the actual texture painting. So by default, if we just click and drag, we should paint anywhere. And actually, if you open up the image over here, you can see the uh, texture popping up. And we can do control Z to go back on that. And you can also see it's kind of being projected out from where we are. So like that area was covered, so it didn't show up there. So the most important thing we want is to hit T to pop out our tools panel. And this is where we will be able to select our color. So we can do a white, a gray, and stuff in between. So the most important thing for this tool is the strength. It starts at 0.7 by default. I usually bump it up to full strength because that's just what I prefer. And we can change the colors to whatever we want. Now, before we spent some time UV unwrapping and made a bunch of sections, and we can actually still select those sections. So at the very bottom, let's go down here and click on Face Selection Masking for Painting. Now, this will make it so that we can only select individual regions uh, to be painted. So we can click, or right click, to select a little triangle, and then we'll only paint in that triangle. But we had it UV unwrapped, so we can actually press L when we're hovering over an area to select that entire section. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to find a decent metallic color. So a little bit of blue, maybe a little bit darker, maybe a bit more off gray. There we go. That's perfect. And we're going to select all the van braces, pauldrons, metal pieces for our guy. Now I get the back plate. And then we can press F to make our cursor bigger and just paint over everything. And now everything we wanted to be a metallic kind of color is our metallic color. So this would be kind of like when you're painting a miniature and you have a base coat. We're not getting into any of the super details right now. We're just getting a basic color, which for some of your background guys might be all you want. So now let's go to the next area. We can actually, we need to click on something first to deselect everything. So we keep pressing L, it'll automatically add stuff to our selection. So let's click on the arm there and the hands, legs, select everything. We're gonna give a uh, fur, fur color, like a base coat of fur. All right, then we'll change to kind of a nullish color. A savanna, sickly, kind of 
yellowish green. Get that selected, and you'll see now, because we had everything in UV unwrapped very nicely, we've got a lot of color on our guy, made him pop out. Actually, probably wanted to select that tail as well. So we'll just hover over that, press L, select the tail in addition. And we are saying we do have to rotate around it a lot. So I'm just kind of pulling back. And letting the software do its work. All right, so that's just two colors done. Now let's kind of find a leathery color for these shorts my guy's wearing. So let's go with kind of a yellow leather. Could be better. Make a little bit darker for the belt. Missed some spots earlier. We'll go back and those in a bit. Let's get a pinkish kind of color for the inside of the mouth and the ears. Of course, we could have also selected the individual teeth and painted those white, some sort of pearlescent color, but kind of elected against that. Actually, going to get this area inside here. Get that loincloth. We go with the more green color for the loin cloth today. And you see there's a lot of spots around here that I haven't touched up that if I was taking more time, I could get covered in paint. So let's go back to a metallic -y color. So a little bit of a blue, but more of a gray and Let's select our spear. Our spear is cut into two sides, so we're going to get both of those. And just get all of our metal bits again. And so just hovering over it and pressing L. So very, very quickly, everything is getting painted. And honestly, already it looks pretty decent. Like if I just needed something really quick for the background of the campaign I was running, this would be more than enough. Actually, let's add some distinctive red color onto that pauldron. There you go. Looks pretty good. All right, and as before, once we've finished painting, all we need to do is go over to our image here, click on this image at the bottom of the image editor, and then press Save as Image. And then we just need to name it and then save it out. And then in a different video, we'll explain how to take that and put it into Aegis Online using the material system. Later, there'll be a built-in system that will automatically import, and you'll be able to select it inside of Aegis Online. But right now, you actually need to modify a JSON file, which is pretty simple. So don't let that intimidate you or dissuade you. All right, so that's texture painting at its most basic. I'm going to show you a couple of advanced things right now. So if you're ready for that, stay tuned. Otherwise, have fun with what you've learned already. See what you can do. All right, so at the top here, we have our brush. There's a bunch of different options here, but we're going to select this one and then click on the plus icon. This will make a duplicate that we have, and we're going to name it text. Now, what we want to do is we want to use this to kind of make different textures. So let's start with this pauldron that we got right here. These pauldrons are a fun place to paint cool things. So we're going to go down to stroke, and we're going to play with these options a little bit. So first, I'm going to hit F and then make this smaller. Now let's make this into a brown color. So, or let's make it blue, just so we have and make sure we have contrast. There we go. All right, so we can actually add in jitter into this. Let's make that a bit smaller. Add in a bunch of jitter, and you can see, getting a little bit of texture, it's going all over the place. So that's one of the options we have. We can also change the spacing here. I'm just going to keep that as is, and we're actually going to go use the texture one here. So same as before, we just click on new, and that'll make a new texture. But we need to modify this because we're going to be using a procedurally generated texture. So again, go all the way over to the right-hand side of the screen. 
and click on this checkerboard pattern right here. And then right here where it says image texture, click on brush texture. And this should be the brush texture we just made. And we can actually change it. So we'll click on clouds and this will generate a bit of Perlin noise that we'll be able to use to color our guy. So let's make our cursor a little bit bigger. And you can see we kind of have a bit of a texture there. Let's change this to black and white just for maximum contrast. And you can see this is the clouds texture being painted directly onto our little polar in the selected area we have over here. And this is one of the ways we can get some texture, but you can kind of see it's got something strange going on. It's not really painting over the area. It's more like we're revealing something underneath. So to change that, we're going to click over here from tiled and we're going to go to random and that will make it that it's always painting over the area. And it's more like using actual paint. So a bit more intuitive to what we're used to. And now what we want to do is we want to go over here and click on colors and then we're going to click on ramp. And this will actually make it so that it's only the white areas that are coming through. And we can actually change those colors now so we can go back to the blue and you can see that it's putting the blue down uh, just like it was a normal kind of spray can. Like we're getting that texture of just a smattering of the blue coming through. This is the Voronoi texture. Very interesting. You can also click over here at this arrow pointing back and forth to actually swap the direction of the color ramp. So let's do one side one way, swap it, and I'll do the other side the other way. You can see the difference in texture there. And that can be very interesting, and you can paint your model using these to get different textures. You can also upload your own, own images as textures, but that's beyond the scope of this guide here. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. Remember to hit the bell icon if you'd like to be notified of future uploads. I'm Kiel the Quick. Thanks for watching. Don't die.